Well, seven zero one, turn right direct to Bland. Seven from Bland, cross Bland out about two thousand. Clear GPS from a one approach. Right, right, uh, direct to Bland. Two thousand. Clear for the Arnash. Deep, uh, rolling one approach. Ultimate seven one. Just the thirteen zero two. Descend to maintain three thousand. Air France zero two two heavy. Maintain four thousand. Maintain four thousand. Air France zero two two heavy. Delta twenty five thirty five. Maintain two one zero nine. Stand up, 2535. Endeavor 6395, speed 18 knots, are greater to Abbey, Kennedy Tower 19-1. Good day. 180 are greater to Abbey over the tower, Air 5395. Chapter 1302, turn left heading 340. 340 and heading to 1302. Air France 022, heavy to maintain 3000. Swedish MSN 3, Southern Air France, 0 2 2 Delta 2535, reduce to 180, contact Kennedy Tower, 19-1. Good day. 180, 19-1, Delta 2535. Ultimate 701, reduce to 160, or less, contact Republic Tower, 118.8. Good day. 18, 8, 6, 160, or less, Ultimate 701. Hello YouTube, Padre Andrew here, taking a look at Flight Radar 24 website for live tracking of aircraft. It does this by consolidating ADS-B signals from ground stations and providing a graphical display with a host of other flight related information. Now Flight Radar 24 is available in a number of subscription packages. If you take a look under the subscription plans, uh, it comes with a free account. But there's also the, the silver for $10 a year, the gold for $35 a year, and then the business package for $500 a year. Now, the nice thing about Flight Radar is that if you set up your own ADSB receiver and provide a data feed to Flight Radar, you can receive the business package for free as long as your ADSB is sending data. Now, in the basic package, go back to the basic uh, basic view. You know, you get all you get all this uh, you get all this all the all the aircraft displayed, but it's all displayed on a Google Maps background. So you know, you see aircraft flying over you know basically flying over a road map. But when you get by a subscription, you get additional map views, including radar views. So let me go ahead and log in. Ah, let me okay, I'm gonna do it under Facebook. As soon as I logged in, I've got a filter set up, so I'm only showing inbound aircraft uh, to JFK right now. And by the uh, the flow of the aircraft, looks like we got people. Uh, uh, this is you know coming in from the rover sector through camera, looking like they're landing. Uh, looks like they're landing the fours, and looks like we got some people coming in on Lindy and Kingston, also joining the flow to land on runway four right. Looks like we got some cameraman arrivals coming in this way as well. Uh, but that's just on a Google, a Google Maps view. Basically, you're looking at airplanes flying over a road map. It is with the paid subscription, starting with the silver, that again, like I mentioned before, you get additional map views. And one of the interesting thing we want to look at is the radar map view. Now, the first thing you do is when you open up the radar map view, it comes with, a, it comes with the option to add predefined overlays. But I don't want to use those, so we're just going to close that. And we're going to move over to we're going to move over to the Kennedy airspace again, and we'll scroll in. So immediately, the first thing you notice is that you've got aircraft, and they're all color coded differently. Now, under the cog, if you go under style, you can color code aircraft to a variety of different meanings: um, climbing, descending, level, ground, local aircraft so on and so forth. You can change those at your own, uh, you can change those uh, to your own desire. Also, if you just click on an aircraft, uh, just like on the default uh, default view, it's going to open up uh, their current ground, ta ground track, and then you're going to get a data tag showing their, uh, showing their call sign, their current flight level, um, the current heading type aircraft, their destination, so on and so forth. Um, and the cog setting again if you go under main you can also open up persistent data tags um, such as call sign and altitude 
And of course, zoomed out this far, you're going to get um, you're going to get more and more information. So if you zoom in, if you zoom in, it'll decrease your area. So what else can you do with the default with the with the radar view? This is where it gets interesting. Going back under the cog for settings under user data, users can upload their own overlays. Which means you can take if you have a properly formatted, uh, for, properly formatted file, you can upload, you can upload radar sector files and actually see aircraft fly, you know, flying through the appropriate sectors. Now, when I first read this information, uh, this little box here did not provide a whole lot of information on how to do that. You can upload your favorite base station outline. Dot o OUT and waypoint WPT files. Maximum file per file size limit is three megabytes and the total storage limit is about five megabytes. You can choose precision level, yada, yada, yada. So, all right, so where do I get these OUT files and these WTP files? How do you format those? Well, looking through the flight radar website, there were no help files. I did some Google searches and I found some references, but they were all disjointed on various old forum posts. So I was able to consolidate all that information and come up with a way you can convert VRC sector files into flight radar OUT and WTP files to upload into flight radar. So let's do that now. Okay, so I switched to Google Slides to make this presentation a little bit easier. And I'm going to be switching between a couple of different programs to show you how to format the SCT files into these very these OUT and WTP files. So going back looking at this this user data tab under the settings under the radar view, looking again at the instruction, you can out, upload your favorite base station outline OUT and waypoint WPT files. And it goes on and talks about maximum file size and so on and so forth. The key word here is base station outline and base station waypoint files. So what's this program base station? Well, come to find out, uh, it's a product of a company called Kinetic a Avionic Products. Uh, it's another one of those uh, pieces of software that takes, uh, you can hook up an ADS-B receiver to your computer, run this software, and then display you know, ADS-B tracks you know, in this software on a, on a simulated radar screen. And then using this product, you can make your own radar sector files, so on and so forth. So these OUT and WPT files are actually designed to work with this base station program, uh, but Flight Radar uses that exact same file format. So I had to do some research. Okay, so now I know what the program is. What is the format of these files? So, and I'm, by the way, I'm going to have links to all all websites and everything you need in the description below. Another pl place I had to go to was this 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 website called Bones Aviation Page, and this and this particular page had exactly what I needed. It had the file format for those two for those two files, the waypoint and output data. Uh, out, I'm sorry, waypoint and outline data files had the exact it had the exact uh, uh, structure for to uh, to draw waypoints and outlines. So let's take for, you know. So let's take a look here. So this you know this this is off of the website. Waypoint files are within waypoint suffix. Uh, they're they're just you know. Text files to say, oh, okay. So all all there are text files. There should be a way that I should be able to you know parse information from one format into another. So basically, what this is a just tutorial on how to parse the data, you know, from uh, from BRC sector files into these two different files. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So this is the structure of the waypoint file. You've got a name. You've got a code. You've got a couple of numbers. You got a latitude, a longitude, and you got an elevation. But what information do we actually need? So in this in this particular file, and you can pause at any time if you want to get more detailed information, or you can again look at the uh, look at the link in the, in the description below to actually see the website. This is more information than we really need. All we really need is a name, the latitude, and the longitude, uh, the waypoint field, and the zoom level. We're going to the I. I 
experimented with the different waypoint fields depending upon the the type of fields and i believe there is um, 30 30 sec you know 30 different types you can select there will have a different color on flight radar i selected a code that is you know that is light gray that's similar to what we have on our current radar radar displays the zoom uh, the zoom factor um, I, be I believe I set it to one, and the only thing you really need is the latitude and the longitude, and then the altitude. If you don't know the altitude, you can set it to zero. So this will become uh, this will become pretty uh, pretty evident when we come to the next couple of steps. So we should all be familiar with a standard VRC sector file. If you've never looked inside of one, basically we want to pull out uh, two types of information: nav aids and fixes. Now I've I've got here listed on this slide VORs and fixes. The NDBs actually follow the exact same uh, exact same column structure, but the column structure for VORs and for fixes in in the sector file is different. But we wanted to be able to translate this into waypoint files to use on flight radars. So this is what uh, our sector file format looks like, and we want to translate it into something that looks like this. And you can see they're completely different. So there is the, uh, uh, you see Cameron, Cameron, comma, one, comma, two. Then you see the latitude and the longitude and then zero for the elevation. So how do we get from, once, uh, from, uh, from one format to another? We should also be familiar with what the, um, with what the video map section looks like in the, in the sector file. And this is the beginning of the N90 JFK runway 13 configuration. I, of course, I can't list the entire thing here. We need to convert this format into something that looks like this. And it can be done, and the steps are pretty straightforward. You're going to need two programs Notepad and Google Sheets. Now, you can use whatever spreadsheet you uh, you like, whether it is Microsoft Excel or uh, LibreOffice or OpenOffice uh, worksheets, uh, because the, the the formulas are the same. But I you know, these are the two programs that I use: Notepad++ and Google Sheets. Um, I'm not going to put links for that. If you just do a um, if you do a search on Notepad++, get it. Very very powerful uh, text editing program. And Google Sheets, you know, comes with, uh, you know, is, is part of the Google Cloud. So those are the two programs you're going to need. This is where you're going to need to create a spreadsheet to do all the parsing. Now, I am not going to post a shared link to this spreadsheet because shared links, they have a very limited lifespan and they will disappear. But what I'm going to give you is you need to you need to structure a Google Sheet a worksheet that has this structure with three tabs. Do not pay attention to the fourth tab that says waypoints, but you're going to need three sheets within your within your worksheet: nav aids, fixes, and outline. Because the column structure for nav aids, for fixes, and for outline is different, so that when it parses into the proper proper output, you get the right file format. Columns A, B, C, D, and D are for pasting information. Columns F, G, and I actually contain formulas. And here are the formulas. So again, I'm going to post all of these formulas in the description below. So you'll be able to copy and paste these formats. Now, if you notice in the, um, in the, in the VRC sector file, the latitude and longitude is not, is, is not a dot decimal representation it is you know the first the first field n040 that's the whole number latitude then the next is the minutes and then the last the last four the last uh, six places is the seconds so they have to be converted so this formula in column F does exactly that in column G it does the exact same thing with the longitude now one thing it does do, though, is that it removes the N and the W. So if it's a north latitude, it's going to be a positive value. If it's a west longitude, it's going to be a negative value. So if you want to have an east latitude, you're going to have to multiply the formula in column C by negative 1. 
If you want an east longitude, you're going to need to remove the negative 1 multiplier in column G. So column F and column G just convert the latitude and longitude into the appropriate decimal latitude and longitude locations. And then finally, in column I, takes all of that information from the previous columns and produces the correct textual information that has to go in the .wpt file. And I'm going to, and I'm going to, don't worry, I'm going to demonstrate how all this works here in just a moment. So let's go over to, let's go over to our sector file. Okay, so this is our sector file. And let's, I'm also, so this is what, you know, a standard sector file version. Uh, this is um, ARAC 1901 um, by our, by, uh, by Prith, who are, by our facility engineers. So, um, so let's take a look at the, uh, let's take a look at the first thing we want we want we want to do here. So we're going to convert some nav aids. Here is the Kennedy sector file ARAC 1901. Thank you, Prith, our facilities engineer, for uh, for doing the massive update. So let's pick out a couple of uh, nav aids. So let's do the first thing we do. We'll do uh, let's do Calverton, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. And we'll copy that, control C. We'll go to our spreadsheet and we'll paste it there. Let's go back, let's do uh, Deer Park. Okay, there's Deer Park. Ah. All right, so Deer Park. Paste, and let's do uh, Canarsie. There's Canarsie. Ah, what happened there? Match whole word. Okay, there we go. That'll prevent that from happening. There's Canarsie. Okay. Control C. Control V. Now. As you pasted the data in, it only goes into the column A. It is not in column B, column C, or column D. Select your range. You're going to go to data, and you're going to split text to columns. And it's automatically going to split using a space as a delimiter, as a, as the uh, delim deliminator, you know what I mean, into the appropriate columns. So there is Canaris, there is Calverton, Deer Park, Canarsie. I already have Canarsie there in the in the um, in the first line. So now what we need to do is copy all these formulas from the first line down to the third line, and there it is. There is our properly formatted three nav aids. So we'll copy that, and we'll go over back to our. Uh, our program, our text editor, create a new text file, and we'll just paste those in there like that. So now we've got three nav aids in the proper waypoint format. So let's take, uh, let's go back to what about fixes? Exact same thing. This is the this is the file. This is the uh, format, the structure for fixes. And take them, you know, take a time to pause and set up a spreadsheet that looks like that. Because remember, the nav aids, you know, the column, the, the column layouts for nav aids is different than fixes. Now, again, back on the nav aids, VORs and NDBs follow the exact same column structure. Fixes follow a, follow a different column structure. So again, uh, columns A, B, C, uh, columns A, B, C, and D, their free text is columns E, F, and E, F, and H that have the uh, the different formulas again column e is just it you know translates the uh, sector file latitude and longitude into actual decimal latitude and longitude again uh, you have to you multiply uh, this formula by negative one if it's an east you know if it's a uh, east latitude i'm sorry a, a north latitude and then you know, you know remove the negative one if you want an east longitude and then finally, column H 
puts everything into the proper formats for the waypoint file. So let's go back to um, so let's go back over to the sector file, and we're going to do the VOR DME runway 22 left. So the first fix is cap it. I'm going to paste that into the spreadsheet. I've already got an example there. Vogel. And then Rushy. Okay, so everything is right now is put, is pasted into column A. We need to uh, split text to columns, so we select our range, go to data, split text to columns, it automatically parses based on the separator, which is a space. Next thing we need to do, we need to copy the formula to translate, paste, and there, and if we, and if we did it right, yep, guess what, the two match. Now we can copy these and put these into our waypoint file. So... Let's close that, and there it is. There is now a properly formatted waypoint file. What about the outline? The outline is is again is a, is is different. Again, the column format is different is a different layout. So again, pause the uh, you know pause the video, set up your uh, you know set up your spreadsheet to look like this. And then the and then the uh, um, the formulas you need are loc are are well again will be posted below. The different thing you notice here is that the W for North and or I'm sorry the uh, <laughs> the W for North, the uh, the uh, um, the uh, the N for North and the W for West have already been taken out. Uh, that's going to happen in another step. That's already been, that'll happen in another step. So there is, you know, so there is the calculation for, um, um, for you know, for latitude. There is the calculation for long, you know, for longitude. Notice that there is no uh, multiplier here right now. We're going to add the positive and the negative in another step. And it will happen actually. In this column right here, I'm sorry, the, the error, there is an error in this example. There should be a negative, um, um, you know, for the uh, you know for the west launch you know, for the west longitude. But this formula you see right here is correct. Again, you want to change, you know, positive for east latitude, negative for south latitude, negative for west longitude, positive for you know, east longitude. So make those appropriate changes depending upon the geographical location where you're at. But if you are you know, if you're in North America, then these formulas will work will work by default. Taking a look at the sector file for Kennedy runway runway one three configuration, the way VRC defines line segments on the video map in the sector file on one line is point A to point B. Next line, point A to point B, next line, point A to point B. In the flightradar.out outline file, point A to point B is defined by line. So you're going to have line, you're going to have point A on line one in the sector file, skip a line, point two, and then you'll have an end of line character. So we need to we need to convert this format, what you see here, into something that looks like this. How is that done? First thing we need to do is we need to select and remove all the leading spaces in the first N. We then need to uh, select and remove W and N from the remainder of the file so that it looks like this. So we're, let's go over to uh, Notepad and see how that's done. So let's find, first of all, we need to find Kennedy Runway 13 configuration. So N90. All right, there is Newark. 
There's Newark CRDA satellite, Long Island, JFK 4. There it is, one threes. So I don't need the first line because the first line is a label. So I'm going to select, I'm going to select 10 just for now because I don't want to select the entire portion. So we're going to select, we're going to copy that, and we're going to create a new file there. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of the portion there. So we're going to do is select all the leaving spaces up until N, Control H, a find and replace. So we're, going to, we're going to find that, we're going to replace it with blank, make sure that's empty, then we're going to click select all. Ta-da, it's gone. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to select the W and replace all, it's gone. Select the remaining ends, replace all, and we're done. Okay, so now we're in the proper format. But another step still has to be taken. So this is what we came up with. We need now to move everything that's in the last two columns under everything in the first two columns. How are we going to do that? We need to go from that to this while maintaining the structure. So this is what an individual line looks like. We need to move that to there. There is a function in Notepad called macro recording. You record a macro, you save it, and then you play it back numerous times to produce the function. So repetitive tax, repetitive tasks can be executed numerous times to the end of the file, and that way it will format the data that you wanted. How does that work? Let's go back to Notepad. All right, first things first, you need to place your cursor on line one to the left of column one. Next thing you do is you're gonna hit macro and you're gonna press start recording. Do not use your mouse, use your arrow keys. Arrow over to the start of column three. Backspace, remove that one space, press enter, press down and press home and then press go back to macro and press stop recording the home button is important press do be sure to press the home button now that your macro is recorded you can go back to macro and you can select playback and to make sure that your that your data advances properly if it does not, you need to re-record the macro until everything looks proper. If you made a mistake, all you need to do is hit, hit Control Z. Now, if you notice right here, I got the ma I got the cursor in the wrong location. If I was to you know I was to say playback, it's you're just going to mess up. You're just going to improperly format your data. So, right now, the macro that I recorded is good. So if I press macro and press playback it should run without any problem. But if I got that long list of data, do I have to do that for every single line? No. All you need to do is press macro, run macro a multiple a run a macro multiple times, run until the end of the file, press run, and there is all your data. So if you had 10 lines of data, you should now have 20 lines of data. Whatever amount of data that you had, it should always end in an even number because whatever you're doing, you've just doubled it. So now you've got your data that looks like this. And back to the you know back to the Google slide, that's the data. However, we're still not done. We still need to add more information to this to get it into the proper format. Going back to Google Sheets, we need to make the data look like this. How do we do that? So let's take a look back. So this is our data that we've just now put into a single column or two columns. You're going to copy that. Control C. Go back to your spreadsheet. You're going to go to outline. I'm going to delete all this. Again, again, going, again, going to paste your data in there. 
Remember, all your data is in column A. You need to parse your data. You need to split your data to columns. So select your range. Split text to columns. And then the next thing you need to do is copy the formula down. And there is your there is the properly parsed data. Again, it automatically adds the plus, you know, the plus and the minus change those for the, you know, depending upon, you know, what hemisphere you're located in, uh, depending upon your geographic location. Again, if you're in North America, uh, that these current default uh, formulas will work for you. Last thing that needs to happen is you need to insert that end of line because what will happen is if you don't put that negative one in between each line segment it will connect this line to that line then that line to that line and then your map will be completely unreadable so but every third line you need to add a negative one so what you need to do then going back to notepad Oops, sorry, going back to your spreadsheet, you're going to select all your data that you just converted, copy that, it's going to go back into Notepad, you can delete that, you don't need that anymore, press V, and guess what, you're going to use the macro again, it's going to say macro, start recording, again, do not use your mouse, use your arrow keys, one, two, enter, negative one, home, down, stop recording. And then run your macro, make sure nothing strange happens. And if you see that, that is properly inserting it where it's supposed to be, you're going to go in macro, run a macro multiple times, run until end of file, there you go. Now, at the end of the file, you may run into this problem here where there wasn't enough free space for your down arrow to work. All you need to do is just be sure that that's at the bottom. Uh, make sure autocomplete is not on. During, again, you should have an even number. Now, you're almost done. You need to add a title. These three lines you're going to use just you know, again these this is just free text it's not going to appear anywhere else but you do need to use type equals nine on the second line and so let me just copy that right out of the slide put that at the top and now you're done so this is your waypoint file and you're going to save this Save as, I'm just going to drop it on my desktop, I'm going to call that jfk13.wpt, I'm going to save this, jfk.out, save, and then you're done. I think that was the last slide. The next step is then to upload all that information. Now, all I did was those small set, those small areas. So right now, if we take a look at, okay, so from my, from my waypoints, that's all I wanted. I just wanted, I just wanted, uh, um, I wanted, let's see, that was Calverton, Deer Park, Canarsie, Caput, Vogel, and Rushy. So let's go take a look at Flight Radar and let's just upload that file and see what happens. So I'm going to go back here over to, you know, over here to uh, user data. I'm going to say, I'm going to say choose file, go to the desktop, and I'm going to select the WT, there's JFK13 WPT open, and then upload. And guess what? There they are. There's Caput, there's Vogel, there's Rushy, there's Canarsie, there's Deer Park, there's Calverton. 
Now what about the complete outline file? Well, that's not the complete outline file. Let's do the complete outline file. So I'll do this in real time now for you. So let me clear up the sheets here. Let me clear up um, the outline file. I'm going to leave. I'm going to delete all that. So let's take. Let's go over to the sector file. Okay. So we're going to look for JFK 13s. Control F. N90 JFK 13 4 is JFK 13 so I want to select a large portion we don't have to click and drag in notepad plus plus come down to edit begin select and that begins the selection process so we move down to the next sector which should be the two twos up there they are I'm just going to move the uh, cursor back one and then collect uh, and then end select and then control C. All right, so here we go. Paste all that in there. First thing we're going to do is remove uh, the N and all the leading spaces. So control H for replace. Make sure there's nothing in the replace field. Replace all. Gone. N, replace all. Gone. W, replace all. Gone. Close. Now we need to. Uh, now we need to move. Uh, the last three columns underneath the first uh, underneath the first two columns. So macro, start recording. I'm going to move my cursor over all the way to the third column. Backspace, enter, down, home, macro, stop recording. I'm going to run it once just to make sure everything looks good. All right, now we watch the magic. Run macro multiple times. Run to the end of file. Run. And there it goes. It may seem like it's locking up on you, but just wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. And there it is. Got an even number of lines. 5132. Now we can select all. Copy. Let's go back to our spreadsheet. I'm going to paste it in the first column there. Remember, everything is in column A. We need to parse that to column A, column B. So we're going to split text to columns. Data, split text to columns. There it is. We need to copy the formula down. So we're going to copy C. Shift, Control, down. Make sure we're at the end. And I'm going to press V. It's going to paste it all. There it is. Okay, next thing we need to do. We need to add in those line breaks or the you know the end of line breaks so we're going to go all the way down here shift control down control c we're going to go back to notepad plus plus cancel i'm going to clear all that out we don't need it control v and go back to the top of the file now we need to insert a negative one in every, in every third line so again make sure the cursor is in column a macro start recording again do not use your mouse use your arrow keys down down negative one enter and I'm just going to press home to be sure. And then macro, stop recording. I'm going to play back once just to make sure everything looks good. Okay, macro, run a macro multiple times, run till the end of the file. And there it goes. Looks like it's locked up. Wait for it. Wait for it. Boom, there it is. Again, you may have this problem where the uh, there's maybe not enough lines at the bottom of the uh, for the arrow down stroke to move. So just make sure that that negative one is on the last line. And now we need to add the header. So I'm just going to pull that header off of the uh, off my slides here. So these three lines, Control C. So the first one has to be in curly's uh, curly brackets JFK 13. Second line uh, dollar sign type equals uh, nine, and the third line is just uh, just a remark. So I'm going to copy that, go over here, cancel that out, go back to the top, go back to the top, paste. And now we can save this as file, save as, put that back on the desktop. I'm going to call that JFK13WOUT. Save, replace, and we're going to go to now flight radar. 
And just for fun, I already reset the uh, radar view to default. So there's nothing loaded here. So when you're going to zoom in, zoom into the Kennedy sector. I'm going to turn, the gr I'm going to turn this grid off. And so draw grid. I'm going to turn that off. AC tags, call sign altitude, user data, choose files. Now we're going to select Kennedy. And we're going to select the outline file, and we're going to select the waypoint file. Up. Out point, waypoint file, an outline file, open, upload, and there you have it. There is the Kennedy 13s. You can see Rushy, Vogel, Caputs. There's Canarsie, there's Calverton, and there's Deer Park. I hope this was informative. The video is a little bit long, but once you get the process down, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Again, you can customize the, uh, the, uh, um, the, the, the colors of the aircraft, any color you want. Um, whenever, a, uh, whenever an aircraft is uh, colored in magenta, that means that's bad ASD data. And those are predicted tracks. So a lot of times, what happens is that they've, you know, the uh, they've lost contact with the ADS-B receiver, and eventually they'll disappear. Uh, but if you ha um, if you have any questions, you know, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, thank you very much, and enjoy creating your sector files for uh, Flight Radar. Have a good night. Have a good day, everybody, and God bless.